Hey everybody, long time no see, but I'm back and I'd like to catch up with um, a news article of interest because I'm fascinated with Dr. Fassman and Dr. Nathan's trials to cure type 1 autoimmune diabetes. Um, a friend, Scott Stromello, told me this morning that NPR was doing a story not directly pertaining to diabetes, but actually about the tuberculosis vaccination and how it apparently they don't think it's doing its job well enough anymore. So, I don't know, just they're thinking of totally changing it up, the availability of BCG and trying to come up with something better to treat tuberculosis. That's all well and good, but that might actually hurt Dr. Fassman and Dr. Nathan's trials if all of a sudden now BCG is sort of fallen by the wayside like a, you know. Oh, anyway, no. But anyway, that's um, a story of interest. Link in the sidebar or on alliesvoice.com. The link should be right at the end of the blog. And that brings me to my question today for you. Has your doctor ever referred to you as a non-compliant patient? Like, in other words, you're not as, you know, beautifully in the range of 80 to 120 all the time with the God-given genetically modified drugs that have been provided to the market. Look, don't get me wrong. Some people love their RDNA analogs. They do. And I would never wish them to be off the market. But what I am saying is that they may be non-compliant because the drugs they've been handed to treat their say, allergy to insulin, which was discovered by the uh, Barbara Davis University out, I think, in Colorado last year. Yeah, if you have autoimmune diabetes, it's because your body turned on your beta cells. They don't like insulin, especially human insulin, but that seems to be the only type of brand created here in the United States with the analogs and the sale of analogs. But funny thing is, is that the treatment of diabetes in countries like India, where they're all responsible for paying for their products, they would pay for something less that does the job just as well, if not better. It costs less. It has less of an immunogenic response because it's next of kin. So your body's not actually attacking your own insulin and then double attacking the exogenous analog you're injecting because it looks just like your own insulin. But what it's doing is it's mitigating that attack. Great. Which allows your beta cells, the ones that are left, to squeak by with some insulin and some C-peptide. That's why that question I always get, why do some people get complications of diabetes and other people don't? That's why. Because they have C-peptide. And C-peptide rises to the occasion when your blood sugar goes high and you need it. It comes out, it does its job, it protects the body. And that's why the rate of diabetes from those people issued the award by Lily, the Lifetime Achievement Award, I love that lifetime achievement. Lifetime achievement of making it despite the fact that they took the good stuff off the market. Anyway, back to my question. Are you a non-compliant diabetic willfully? Or are you just trying to explain to your doctors the same way all of my heartbreaking appointments go? I don't like what they sell here. It's not my choice. I like the highly purified animal insulins that I didn't find until 20 some odd years into my diabetes. It would have made it all so much better. Some of my doctors would look so much younger. It would be great. But no, it's not out there. But it should be. It should be. It's your God-given right. Like the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. These are all important things. America was founded on these things. And for you to choose the weapon that you're going to protect your body, yeah, it should be out there. You should have the choice. But if you were diagnosed in the last... 20 years, it really probably wasn't brought to your attention because doctors were being informed it was coming off the market. So they had to do everything they could to move everybody into the only choice that the insulin companies wanted to provide. It worked with their business model, it worked with their bottom line, but it may not have worked for you. And that's why I'm saying your feedback is important. Check out that story on the NPR News about the BCG vaccination and, um, you know, subscribe at YouTube so you can get the videos. Subscribe at Allie'sVoice.com so you can read the, the whole blog with all the good information and whatnot. And I'll see you next time, guys. Sorry it's been so long. <laughs> Bye.